Colonel Richard, I'll start with you. Both of you popped up to the match. You love to see it. Uh -huh. Colonel Richard, I'll start with you. <laughs> should we should we have a little bit of gentle nudge, a little bit of pressure to people to, to make them wear a poppy? No, certainly not. It's it's not a fashion statement or a virtue signal. You wear a poppy because you you it's effectively a receipt for contributing to the British Legion, which supports our servicemen and families of servicemen who are in difficulties. Uh, that's the primary objective of the poppy. And of course, wearing it is also a symbol of respect for and, and commemoration for what these men and women who fought in various wars on behalf of our country have done. And so it's right that you should wear it if you choose to, but you should not be under pressure to do so. And I think, in fact, it does undermine the respect aspect of it if you feel obliged to do so, if you want to show off that you're wearing a poppy, because that's not what it's about. It's not about showing that you are a supporter of um, the war dead. It's about it's it's about it's a pers it's much more of a personal idea, in my opinion. It's something a bit a bit deeper. I, I do get that, Henry Bolton. I'll throw it your way now because there's a lot of virtue signalling about in society now. I mean, there's the old rainbow flag that seems to be absolutely everywhere. For example, a lot of people feel quite pressured to get involved with that. I mean, why shouldn't people be a bit pressured maybe to wear the poppy as well? Well, I think, Patrick, the thing is that uh, many people have been uh, brainwashed almost. I mean, I know school children around where I live have been to believe that actually the poppy glorifies war. But as, as Colonel Richard Kemp has just said, it doesn't. It's effectively a receipt for your donations to the Royal British Legion. The Royal British Legion does incredibly good work looking after former servicemen and women who have, who have now fallen on hard times or are suffering due to injury or, or mental health issues. And so, you know, it, the, the poppy is an intrinsically charitable thing that marks the respect that we have for people who have made a huge sacrifice mental health, injury or mm. death, in standing firm, standing up and saying, you will not pass. And we'll, they've protected us. They have secured our future and our, and our freedom. Uh, World War I, World War II, yes, but in, in subsequent conflicts as well. And yeah. for those people who have served, I think it is a little bit of an insult for you to, to say you're glorifying war by wearing a poppy. Now, yep. I, I totally agree with, with Colonel Kemp in that people shouldn't actually be pressured, ordered, or, or in some way cajoled into wearing a poppy. It does undermine, undermine its meaning. But I do believe that there are a lot of people out there who are trying to turn the whole reason for the poppy around. Maybe they don't, they're not aware of what it means. Maybe well, that's they a good are. point. I and know, actually, Henry, that Henry, that's a worry. really good point for me to come in because you said the words that maybe they're not aware. And Colonel Richard Kemp, I'll bring you back in on this now because I went out and spoke to a few people before and the younger people didn't really appear to know what the poppy was all about. And I thought, goodness gracious me, they're probably taught in schools that the British Empire was a terrible thing and all of the wrongs that Winston Churchill did. But they don't appear to be actually being taught about the symbolism of the poppy, what it really means, and maybe you know, some of the, 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 the heroism, really, of, of British war veterans. And are you concerned by that? that we're maybe losing a younger generation in that regard. I haven't had that experience myself. I mean, you probably mix uh, in a wider circle of people than I do. But I, for example, this morning at uh, 11 o'clock, I was at a Armistice Day event at my old school. And I spoke to many of the current pupils who were well aware of what it all meant. And in fact, one young man was wearing his father, who had been killed serving in the forces, wearing his father's medals. And, and he certainly knew all about it. And many others did. So I, I mean, I'm sure there are plenty who don't. And it's, it's a you know, a failing of our education system, if that's the case, and of course, also a failing of their parents, because it's the sort of thing that parents should be teaching. But the thing that does concern me about many schools now is how much the uh, the Peace Pledge Union is infiltrating its way into schools and kind of cajoling them into buying white poppies. And the white uh -huh. poppy is something. I mean, you shouldn't. They shouldn't be banned, but they 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 shouldn't be promoted either, in my view, because what they is a left wing political symbol which aims to undermine our concept of remembrance. It's a propaganda thing only. It doesn't provide any support for the, uh, for the armed forces, obviously, because the people that are involved in it actually don't like the armed forces. So I think that's an area that schools should be much more careful of, allowing this sort of hard-left propaganda. With you.
I, I agree with you completely. I, I, I agree with you. It, it, actually, it, it makes me quite angry. Henry Bolton, I can see you nodding your head there. The White Poppy Brigade, what do you make of all them? Well, I, I, frankly, I think they're the ones that should be ashamed of themselves. I mean, they are showing total disrespect for the efforts and sacrifices that servicemen and women have made over the generations and that have actually allowed them to complain and to protest. Now, I have no objection to peaceful protest, but I, I do take offence, and it is real offence, when I see people there who are saying, you're glorifying war, or that this, this whole thing about Britain and what Britain's done, it's all a load of rubbish, um, we should be ashamed of what we've done. No, absolutely not. There are men and women out, out there who haven't only safeguarded the interests of the United Kingdom and, and, the, and the citizens, our great wow. citizens, but also our allies and friends abroad. And may that long be the, the case, that the British servicemen and women of this country, they are prepared to stand up, stand firm and protect the values, stand by the values that, that we all believe in. And those okay. people who want to undermine that, frankly, are being subversive. And as, as, as Richard Kemp says, absolutely, they are undermining the whole purpose of the poppy and the meaning behind it. It's deliberate and it's, it's, they should be ashamed of themselves. OK, Colonel Richard, I'll just give uh, a final word to you on this now. I'll just kind of do a bit of a full circle. Do you think that a lot of people who fought and died in the two big wars, as it were, the two world wars, would be happy with what they see now in British society? And um, when we see, you know, eco-zealots gluing themselves to things and police apparently letting them do that, the way that we appear to prioritise, perhaps, anyway, the care of others, people maybe coming across the channel as opposed to our veterans on the streets. I don't know. How do you think they'd view that? Well, of course, everyone... You know, there's not a kind of a amorphous group that served. Pretty much mm. people from pretty much every background served with various different political opinions. I'm sure if you take, for example, the generation of the First World War and the Second World War, they would be horrified. Even even those with left wing views uh, would be horrified at the way that some things are conducted in our country now. And some of the things you've mentioned, I've no doubt about that. Uh, they would be, and and quite rightly too, and, and as I am, and as pretty much everyone else I've ever served with is. So I think it, uh, it's, you know, it's it. But but one thing we shouldn't forget, I think, in all this discussion is that the reason these people fought and died, they obviously fought for the soldiers left and right, and they fought for their families, they fought for their own lives, but they also fought for our way of life, which includes mm. freedom, democracy, and the ability, you know, freedom of speech included. So I think one has to be slightly cautious about saying that they would have disapproved of this or disapproved of that. I, I've no doubt many of them would, but they fought for our freedom, and that, in, that does include some of the things that we disagree with that many other people are doing. It's a good point. It's a very good point. Look, both of you, thank you very much. Henry, you're going to have to be very quick, can we? Very quick. I, I, you know, I remember my great-uncle, a great influence on me, the only officer in his battalion to survive through the First World War from the beginning to the end. And he was already, in the 80s, seriously worried in the 1980s, not only in yeah. the 80s of his, of his life, seriously worried about the way that the, the, the country was going and the education, and that children of, of further generations weren't being taught about the horror of war, yes, but not the values that caused yeah. us to go to war and defend values in the first place. And he was worried about yeah. that, um, bless him, but uh, he's no longer with us, so he can't answer for himself. But I think yeah, there was a different perspective amongst that generation than the one that is around today.